Hi, I'm Katherine Anaya, and I am a proud Cocoa Pop parent. Remember back when you were in middle school, 50 years seemed like such a long time. But believe it or not, Cocoa Pop has been around for 50 years and is still going strong. It is quite the story. It was more open. Um, we had a lot more things running through. There was not a lot around here at that particular time. It wasn't uncommon at all to come to school and hear donkeys braying in the background. You hear goats, you'd see do uh, horses walking by. The across the street used to have rams and they would get out once in a while and run through the campus and you know, scare the kids. If you walk around the campus of Cocoa Paw, you'll notice all the great buildings. Many people say it looks like a junior college, but what you may not know is back in the day, Cocoa Paw was country before country was cool. We had some javelina one time. Uh, my first year teaching, I had a rattlesnake outside my room. <laughs> so. the sewers would back up because we were on a uh, septic system. The building reminded me of motel. You know, a door into each class like a motel. At that time, it was a K through eight campus, a little bit different. So we had the kindergarten through fourth grade on one side of the campus, and then we had the fifth through eighth grade on the other side of the campus. Like all great stories from history, Cocoa Paw has its share of dramas, natural disasters, and even crime. We were in the gym and I'd walked outside and coming down the road was a tornado and we ran back inside and got in a doorway until it went by. And when we came out, uh, it had come down Shea Boulevard and it had knocked down multiple, multiple trees, came through the neighborhood, took off roofs. I was here for a couple food fights. I've been involved in, I want to say three food fights. Every kid in the school participated, I think, and we had an assistant principal standing in the middle of it as they flowed around her and she just sat there and just screamed. The minute it happened, I had called for a lockdown of the cafeteria. Every door was blocked so no one could leave and the students didn't leave the cafeteria until it was spotless. Um, I do not remember a tornado, but what I do remember is a lockdown due to a massive swarm of bees crossing our campus. It was a black cloud you could not see through, and it was literally covering half of our campus. We rebuilt the new school. We're proud to say that during the construction, we didn't have one day of closure. I mean, we went from, you know, uh, basically nine or ten buildings, maybe eleven buildings, and totally spread out. They were totally antiquated. They're beat up. They're used. Because we had single-story buildings, there were so many more buildings that we just don't have anymore. Now you look out, and it's just open and it's inviting. It wasn't inviting before we had this current campus. It's a lot easier now. The old campus was just really run down and falling apart. When we got a brand new school, we got a brand new outlook on education. Two, one, two, two. It was usually a good blend of nostalgia mixed with awe in our new, our new facilities. The good part about this being 50 years old is the people, the, the generations, every, everybody keeps coming back. Cocoa Pod definitely has a legacy. Over the years, Cocoa Pod has turned out thousands of students who have then gone on to become parents and even become teachers themselves. Teachers teaching right here at Cocoa Pod. It's home for me. My mom started teaching here when I was in seventh grade myself, and when she retired, I picked up and started teaching here the next year, and I've been here ever since. My first ever experience with Cocoa Pa would have to be as a student in fourth grade. I attended school here from fourth to eighth grade. My mother got a job here when I was in the fifth grade, 
And so I've literally been dealing with Cocopa Middle School since the fourth grade. My brother and sister both went to Cocopa and my son went to Cocopa. <laughs> The buildings have changed, the faces have changed, but one thing that has remained consistent is the value that Cocopa places on its people. This is really a school that functions like a community and a family. The kids care about each other. The teachers just are unbelievably caring about their kids. The biggest difference I see is that the kids here are really focused on achievement and academic success. Parents choose to bring their children here. I have children who drive over an hour just to come here to Cocopa. What I see is I see that the kids have pride in their environment, in their education, in others. The school I see being alive in 100 years. The Cocopa kids really are ambitious. They have a, they have a sense of destiny. We had two major situations with a couple of teachers this year, one with an illness and one with a car accident. Um, not a car accident, a hit and run, really. And the way the children have rallied in our community, have rallied for these two teachers, um, some of them who didn't even know their teachers very long, um, is, just, is just what Coca Pa is all about. You know, teachers come, teachers go, and I've said that when, now I'm going to cry, um, <laughs> is that this will be my last school. Like, I can't imagine teaching anywhere else. And that when I leave teaching, I will pack up my boxes from Coca Paw because I truly found my home when I came here. Coca Paw is just one in a million. I want to try to prepare them for the eventuality of life and being able to make a living to support a family. I just want to help them move in the direction of maturity. I want them to grow. 30 messages. <laughs> Thank you, Coco Pa. Congratulations on 50 years, and here's to 50 more.